with his first album titled Amanzi in 2007. Followers, colleagues and haters all agreed that the script is finally rewritten. Apart from his use of pure Setswana and unapologetic approach, Momuli Miwon hearts with his uh, sense of depth and being uh, thoroughly politicized and speaking of a truth many didn't care about. He's back with his second album uh, titled Asiya is uh, the reason why everybody's talking about him uh, these days. Well, he's here to tell us more about about his latest and second album. Welcome to Morning Love. <laughs> uh, why is it called um, ASIA, this album? Uh, shortly, it's an acronym for And So Is Africa. Okay. Yeah, it's basically inspired by a um, back packing trip I did back in 2010 where I traveled uh, a little bit of Southern Africa and just to see what, what, what the rest of the, what parts of the continents look like because it always seems like uh, in South Africa, we're living in a faraway world, like, mm. apart from where the rest of the continent is. Why did it take you this long to release a second album? Well, um, it's actually my third album. My mm -hmm. second album came out, uh, it ran about that year, but it was totally independent. So okay. uh, it was a learning curve from a business point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. What are you talking about in this latest album? It, it talks about the role of us as 20 years into democracy, what is our role in the greater scheme of the continent? How do we take Africa to its rightful place as an economic force, a cultural force within the global context? Because uh, isolated uh, as South Africans, there's nothing much we can do. But the day we know how to fuse, become 50 states of Africa, then clearly we'll become to play the role because we have all the minerals, all the resources in this continent uh, to feed the world, to supply with minerals and everything. How do we manage them? How do we begin to build our self-esteem mm. to take our place in the world? What are the highlights of putting this album together? Working with uh, my boys back home, Komaf, uh, yeah. Tepo, Weezy, and, uh, and all the other guys developing artists, you know. Um, that's the be most beautiful thing because um, our art is so concentrated in one area. Mm. There are a lot of artists throughout the whole uh, country who don't get opportunity because they're um, in the periphery of development. Mm. What well. did uh, Amanzi do for you as a hip-hop artist? Amanzi really introduced me to the music industry, mm. uh, of which I started to learn that having a musical talent it's not necessarily mean you have the personality for the business. It was an eye-opener for me because I prefer to keep to myself a lot. You know, yeah. I live in my head. and. Those struggles, you know, just having to deal with knowing that can I really live um, that life of camera, live action, smile. Yeah, yeah I think that's <laughs> what I'm going to do for me, yeah. Okay, so now take us through the differences in this album. I mean, you, you said the second album was done independently. Yes. Now you've got this one. In yeah. comparison to Amanzi, how have you grown since then? Yeah. And what is the distinct differences? Um, the first album, Amanzi, was, was through EMI Lekoko. And mm. uh, of course, it was signed that. Then the second album, we did it totally independent. Mm. And the this album, we signed to Shea, uh, Iris, and with my partner, Masi. So we, it's a combination of the the two ideas, partly independent and partly with the mainstream, so we can get into mainstream. But in general, really, um, hip hop does not have a, uh, an, a foot in the economy in this country mm. because it, it has a lot of media hype, but the sales do not reflect uh, what it is about. So we're still learning and becoming better business people for it. What would you say is the best part of doing what you're doing and the place that you find yourself in right now? Look, um, I always get criticized for not marketing my albums a lot, uh, especially from people who really appreciate it. Uh, the truth is, I also uh, double into agriculture a lot. Mm. I love the farming business. It's my bread and butter. It's where, I, it's where I, I, I'm hoping to make my living to the future. Mm. So just trying to balance uh, my commitment to both activities is it's a big challenge. Do you love both equally? No, I love farming better. <laughs> so music is a hobby? No, music is, is a marketing tool to what I want to achieve in my farming. It's a competitive advantage in a oh, way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, before I let you go, the summer nomination. Yeah. Is it for this? It's for this album. It's yeah. for us, yeah, yeah. What does that mean for you? Oh, damn, like the nomination is as good as a win for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, uh, especially doing it the way we have done it. Um, the sales are good. It continues to sell. Yeah. But because I'm not really on the mainstream, uh, I didn't expect much, but the nomination... 
I'm going to take the nomination. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll go to San City and ball, you know. <laughs> so whatever happens in San City is okay. All right. I'm happy. Mulimi, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, his third album, in fact, yes. and latest album is titled Asia, following his long break from the industry since the release of his first album, Amanti, in 2007. If you missed his first performance, stay tuned to see if you like what this album has to offer. Let's take a break. He'll perform for us just before we say